In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the AK-47 and with the recent nerf to all the 5.56 ammo, I think that throws the AK in the conversation as the best rifle in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And I honestly think if it wasn't such a high level unlock, it would be more of an issue within the meta and you'd see a lot more people using it. And the reason I say that is because based off the damage profile, you're almost always gonna kill people within three shots. The exception of this, if you're hitting limbs, you'll do a slightly less damage and then it'll be four shots to kill. So that leads to a rather consistent time to kill, which is always nice when you're using a weapon, you'd like it to kill in the same number of bullets a majority of the time. Where this is different is when you actually land headshots. You manage to land two headshots, you're pretty much going to kill that individual almost every single time. I think the biggest issue people will struggle with is controlling the recoil, but if you put on the right attachments, which we're gonna talk about in today's video, that should make it a lot easier. So even though it can kill in two shots and four shots, the vast majority of the time, you're gonna end up killing someone in three shots, which gives you a time to kill of 202 milliseconds, which places it fifth in the rifle category at close range, and second at those further distances. So obviously you saw what the weapon could do in that initial clip as well as I was able to get a nuke. So let's go ahead and talk about the best attachments in my opinion. You can see that I run an optic. You don't have to run an optic. They do have some pretty clean iron sights, but I think on some of these maps, it's just nicer to have an optic. When it comes to the muzzle, I like the compensator. For the barrel, I like the RPK barrel. Even though the range doesn't really matter, you're equipping that one for the recoil control. The Ranger foregrip is my favorite when I was able to experiment back and forth. And then I do like the rubberized grip tape. Also an alternative to this is swapping out that muzzle for the monolithic suppressor. And even though it doesn't say it, I felt like I was way more accurate and had less recoil, but I think that has to do with reduced muzzle flash which isn't really mentioned, but is a part of having a suppressor. So now I've already gone ahead and covered why you clicked on this video. So if you've enjoyed the video up to this point or found it helpful in any way, please do me a favor hitting that like button. And if you're brand new to the channel or not currently subscribed, feel free to hit that red subscribe button, turn it to gray with notifications on to be able to find your way back for more Call of Duty news, tips and tricks, and best class setups. This part of the video is typically where I transition to a gameplay breakdown, and at least from my subscribers' perspective, I feel like this part is honestly the most informative and helpful part to actually help players improve. So right now, I've made it to this point. I'm one off my chopper gunner, so I'm gonna play my life. Any smart person is going to play their life. I go ahead and put the VTOL right on top of this objective so the enemies can't flood into it. They're gonna have to worry about taking it out, and then you're gonna see that allows us to take out B. I almost get taken out right here as the guy comes down the stairs. I'm just pre-aiming it, waiting for the VTOL to start doing some work. You can see my teammates are spawning on me. That provides a good way for us to actually take this objective. And as you'll see, this one kill ends up being very valuable for the number of kills I'm able to get. And then allows us to get total map control. Right here, I call him the chopper gunner. And then my first attack is always on the hill. I take out all the tanks, anyone sniping out there, because then it allows our team to push forward. Typically, these guys don't play the objective at all. What they'll do is just jump back in the tank and they'll wheel their way all the way up there and then they end up getting DEFCON. That's nine times out of 10. What happens if you're able to push forward, gain that map control, call on some streaks, you pretty much are able to push all the way forward because the enemy team doesn't have a chance to really push all the way to the other side. You see a lot of the enemies are over at D. When you are using these types of aerial streaks, you kind of want to make a mental note of where a majority of the enemies are so you can kind of attack that area from the appropriate angle. And in this particular scenario, since you're not able to cycle streaks, there's no real reason for me to stay alive. I've already been able to call a tactical nuke with the AK, so I don't really need to go for it in camp or anything like that with claymores. And that's the hard part balancing with this game, because personally, in previous Call of Duties, I like to play as smart as possible. But the way they designed the game, they really want you to play super passive, to camp as much as you can, free aim everything, walk as much as you can, never sprint, never run. So it's always that hard balance because obviously I wanna move around the map, have some fun, but if I just camped, I could get full streaks every single match. I would call in a chopper gunner, I'd call in a VTOL, and then I would die, and then I could just repeat that process. And for some people, they have a ton of fun doing that. Personally, I would only do that just to go in and demonstrate something specific. Right there, I was trying to run, hopefully the tank was gonna stop. And then I was gonna throw one of the thermites. In case you guys missed my video, that is one of the easiest ways to destroy tanks is to use thermites and then finish it off with the launcher. So they don't really have any chance to get out. I was able to take out that guy. Now running up, I wish I had dead silence in this scenario because more often than not, as I come up this area, I usually try to go for the flank. Right here, I end up hip firing. I'm going for my hip firing challenges. 
This is on the road to get that gold, which I eventually was able to get. I didn't know that the guy was knifing. If I did, I probably would approach this differently. I thought the guy had a gun. I didn't really think he'd challenge. I was trying to come to full health, and then I jump out and maybe try and hit fire the guy. So that's an unfortunate way to die, but at least I could start over and try and get another streak. Obviously, like I said, I could camp if I wanted to. Just sit and be, never move. You can see we're defconning, and somehow the enemy team was able to grab C. So I'm running up. You can see all my teammates' dots. They're not even moving. That's how the vast majority of everyone plays. Running through the door, I see my teammates over here. So I'm thinking this is pretty clear. I get a thermite ready to actually throw on C. You can see my teammates just laying there. I go to throw the thermite, cross over. I'm not thinking anyone's there. I throw the second one as a precaution and then I follow it up with the flashbang. And then I go ahead and jump out thinking there's someone in the corner and then it ends up being nothing there. So now I'm moving my way across and you can see where most of the enemies are. They're kind of just sitting back. There are some at C, our teammates are taking it. I mount my weapon, go ahead and take that guy out, and then we end up death conning again, and the enemy team starts taking D. So now I gotta go ahead and run to the other side of the map and try and get to D as fast as possible to see if I can actually help out in that area. But it also looks like our team is losing B. And at this particular situation, I could actually peek and take my time and look forever, but in this particular case, I was just running across. The smarter play is to play slow, but this isn't the smarter play. This is trying to get back into action. And unfortunately, that's gonna lead to some easy deaths. If we were playing another Call of Duty where there's a little bit more of a skill gap, you really wouldn't have to worry about that. They specifically made that path wide enough for a tank to go ahead and roll through. And even with the buff to the overall movement, you're not able to double sprint across there and slide into cover without taking damage. It's not the way the game was designed. It was designed for specific scenarios like that where I could do the smart thing, come out, peek the 17 different angles that I could be hit from and then make a move and then still get killed. Or I could just go for it and say, hey, you know what? Nine times out of 10, someone's not gonna be pre-aiming me. And that was the one time out of 10. So it really depends on how you look at it. The smart thing to do would just been play it slow, stay in my building and never move. But I don't really think that that is a fun way to play because then you don't end up getting an engagement. I go to mount up, take that guy out. We were able to retake D. And then now I got to go ahead and move to a different part of the map. You can see the enemies are working on B and then they also have A. And you can see I peeked to check those hot spots of where enemies are likely to be. Obviously, I couldn't check every single area, but that is primarily because I died in the previous scenario. If I didn't die in that scenario, I probably would have just ran out in this scenario. No big deal. Like I said, sometimes people are pre-aiming you. There could have been four enemies pre-aiming me. There could have been none. And it, that's the really issue with this game is there's too many sight lines for you to literally check everything. Sometimes you just have to guess and hope for the best and hope for a little bit of luck. And that's kind of unfortunate because you shouldn't have to go through all that. And that's why the simplicity of a three lane map or even some of the older CODs didn't have a hundred lanes where you could literally be seen from. So it's kind of a balancing act. Right here, I know there's guys up top. I go ahead and jump up. Even though this is their spawn, I know I can get sniped. I jump out real quick, take them out, and now I have a UAV. And the most interesting thing in this game is the first time I've ever seen it in Call of Duty. If you look at the minimap, nine times out of 10, if you look at all my teammates, almost all of them are literally standing still unless they just spawned in. And that just shows the overall lack of skill that the game actually has because you could just post up in one area, pre-aim, and then you're gonna get kills, you're gonna get your streaks. Like I said, it ends up coming down to play style, not so much anything about skill. I can mount my weapon, I'm gonna have very limited recoil, even at the furthest ranges. I can use an SMG and I can map someone from very long distances because even at those further distances, if you're able to land headshots, the time to kill is still pretty fast. You can see I know that the guy's in the window, there's an enemy over here on the left side, just killed my teammate, and then I decide to go ahead and run up. So right here is gonna be a specific example of how you get punished for moving while you're not using dead silence. You can see it's still a couple more seconds before dead silence kicks in. The guy here is my footsteps. You can see it in the kill cam. He literally turns his aim and is ready for that gunfight. And I have no clue he's there because he's barely even moving. He took like two steps and then just snapped onto me and destroyed me. And those scenarios happen all the time. Sometimes you'll benefit from them because maybe you're walking a little bit slow and you hear people running and then you're just pre-aiming. And a lot of times this just leads to one-sided gunfights where you're killing people that had no chance 
and vice versa. People were killing you and you basically had no chance. So we got a little bit of tank justice right there with our two thermites. I jump in, I don't know 100% know where the guy was. And that's the thing with jumping in there. There could have been guys at three different angles and I was just jumping to where likely somebody was gonna be. I was able to get one kill and then there was three people shooting at me. With the time to kill in this game, you're pretty much instantly dead. So overall, you can kind of see how the match played out as a whole. Let me know down in the comments section, what type of gameplay breakdown do you prefer? Would you rather it be 6v6, 10v10, ground war? And what play styles are you looking for? Because I could pretty much play whatever. Hopefully if you made it to this point in the video, you enjoyed the content in some way. If you did, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty news, best class setups, and ways to improve, Make sure you do subscribe with notifications on. We appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day.